In holdover news that isn't Walt Disney's Black Panther. Warner Brothers, Time Warner Inc.'s Ready Player One is now the second biggest Hollywood release of the year, at least in terms of global box office. The Steven Spielberg action fantasy continues to crush it overseas, especially in China where it has earned $163 million thus far from a $14 million opening day and $62 million Friday to Sunday weekend. All told, the $175 million Warner Brothers, Time Warner Inc. release, courtesy of WB, Village Road Show and Amblin, has earned $391 million worldwide. That puts it above not only Tintin, $377 million in 2011, as Spielberg's biggest non-Indiana Jones flick since War of the World back in 2005, but also above WB's other buzzy sci-fi action fantasies Edge of Tomorrow, $370 million in 2014, and Mad Max, Fury Road, $377 million in 2015. Neither of those got that boost from China, but money is money, even if WB only gets around 25% of that Chinese box office in their own coffers. The film had a solid second weekend in North America as well, earning another $25 million, minus 40%, despite competition from Blockers and A Quiet Place. It jumped 63% on Saturday from Friday, it jumped 29% last Saturday from its first Friday, meaning it's big with the kids. That puts the flick at $96.9 .9 million in 11 days, and it should cross $100 million domestic, and $400 million worldwide in a couple of days. Of note, G.I. Joe, Retaliation fell 48% on its second weekend for a $20.8 million frame and $86.4 million 11-day total, minus 48.5%, second weekend and $86.4 million 11-day total. That sadly prescient sequel's horror competition was the Evil Dead remake and its $25 million debut. Ready Player One did better even with stiffer competition. If it continues to merely play like G.I. Joe, Retaliation, it'll end its domestic run with $138 million. But with a hold like this, even with WB and New Line's Rampage set to swipe screens and attention next weekend, I wouldn't be shocked to see a $150 million domestic total. Roadsides I can only imagine earned another $8.356 million, minus 20%, in its third leggy weekend for a dynamite $69 million 24-day total. It has passed War Room, $67 million in 2015, to become the second biggest straight-up faith-based drama, not counting Passion of the Christ or the Narnia movies with God's Not Dead, A Light in the Darkness and Paul, Apostle of Christ not providing any real competition for the faith-based market, it may yet topple heaven is for real, $91 million in 2014, in terms of unadjusted domestic grosses. It could be the first $100 million faith-based drama. Lionsgate's Acrimony earned another $8 million in its second weekend normal for Tyler Perry, drop of 53%. The $20 million to Raji P. Henson Melodrama has now earned $31.3 million in 10 days. At a glance, we are probably looking at a $45 to $50 M domestic total, which is, again, par the course for Tyler Perry, especially for films without Medea on the poster. Paramount, Viacom Inc.'s Sherlock Gnomes earned another $5.6 million, minus 20%, weekend and $33.8 million, 17-day total. That's a great hold but, unless it goes bonkers overseas, we shouldn't expect a third one of these. Universal, Comcast Corp's Pacific Rim, Uprising earned just $4.49 million, minus 48%, in its third weekend, which would be a decent hold if the numbers were bigger. Legendary's $150 million sci-fi sequel has earned $54.9 million domestic and will end its domestic run with just over $60 million, or way below the first film's $102 million Human 2013. It's doing a little better overseas, around $275 million, but mostly done, but not to the extent that this is anything other than a bad idea. You got to stop making sequels to movies that audiences didn't love, or even like, the first time out. Now Sony's Peter Rabbit earning $273 million worldwide on a mere $50 million budget, that's a slightly better result. Wes Anderson's I Love Dogs expanded to 554 theaters and earned $4.6 million, 59%, weekend, $8.3,000 per theater, and a $12.04 million 17-day cum. 
It's still tracking just below Grand Budapest Hotel, although it's way too early to be that optimistic. Oh, and Tomb Raider has now earned $55.5 million domestic and $262.9 million worldwide on a $94 million budget, making the MGN and WB flick a modest win for video game adaptations. As for whether it's a new franchise, well, that's a coin toss decision and you might want to see what happened to Pacific Rim after not quitting while you're ahead.